Welcome to Voodoo Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of Gravity Rush 2. I played it on the PS4, and that's all it's available on. So to start out, Gravity Rush 2 follows Kat once again, the gravity shifter, but it starts out with her having no gravity powers due to circumstances beyond her control. So there's a period of time, it's not super long, where you have to play as her without any powers whatsoever. She cannot shift gravity. And because of those same circumstances, she has found herself with this floating group of miners that are digging up ore and trading it. And basically, it's her new job. Now, fortunately or unfortunately for her, she at least knows somebody in this crew because Sid is with her from the first game. And obviously, that's not the entirety of the game. Things get a little more interesting when Dusty shows back up and she gets her powers once more. Then the story takes this, like, socio-political turn, which... I don't know. I'm fine with stories like that. This one just could have been a little more subtle. And the game itself could have taken a more unique approach to Raven, who is back in the game. Because, well, she starts out as a villain again. I mean, she wasn't truly a villain in the first game, but she starts out a villain in this. And, of course, you have to turn her back to your side. And you do, which isn't a spoiler because it happens pretty damn early in the game. But that part's a little boring, a little played out. But then when I talk about the socio-political part, what I mean is it's very classist. The society that Kat is now in is a very class-based society, and the story itself is very much fuck rich people. Like, that is exactly what it is all about. And I don't know, I don't mind there being messages, even messages like that, but do think you can handle it in a more subtle way. All the shittiest people in this game are the rich people. None of them are remotely decent. And, you know, it's just one of those games where it's like, hey, guys, you could be a little more subtle with your messages. I think that would have been a huge improvement on the story had they been a little more subtle. I'm not saying one way or the other, but I am saying subtle messages are a little more appreciated than a baseball bat to the face. That having been said, I mean, we have seen stuff like that happen in Brazil. Because, I mean, this is well beyond any class thing that you've ever seen in America. This is, like, the kind of shit that was happening in Brazil with, like, the government and the rich folk. Like, literally using the police as a military force to push people out of the favelas. Like, it was that level of shit in this game. So, I guess, I mean, I've seen it in real life. I just... I'm looking for something outside of real life when I go to play video games. When it comes to the audio, we are back to a very similar soundtrack, very similar sound effects, and they all still work very well with this game. And it's still got that made up language. So once again, voiceover work is not super, super important. Some of it is clearly, there are some Japanese things in there, the way they pronounce certain words. But the rest of the language is clearly something that's just completely made up. So, like I said, voiceover work not super important. I guess I kind of take that back. The voiceover work becomes a little more important in that case because they have to really get the tonality of the character in that situation just right so that you actually give a shit. Now, when it comes to the gameplay mechanics and controls, obviously, like I said, you start out without your powers but you get your powers back. So it becomes very similar to the first Gravity Rush in that your character basically falls in any direction, up, down, left, right, etc., etc., and uses that to attack. And their ability to control gravity, to lift objects, throw them, make themselves heavier so that they can kick people from the air, etc., etc. But beyond that, there's also the same side missions, finding people to talk to, challenges, and main missions that were in the first game. So a lot of that is very similar. One thing that's a huge difference is the map. Oh man, it is fucking huge in this game. It is way bigger. Just way, way bigger. They also added a couple, not quite multiplayer, but you can affect certain things online, like... There are treasures to be found, and you can essentially take a selfie of your character by the treasure to give clues to other players as to where to find it. So I thought that was a kind of interesting idea, and the camera plays a role in some of the side missions as well. One thing that I found kind of negative 
with the huge map is that the gems that you used to find to level up your abilities are very, very spread out. And so it gets a little hard to level up like your gravity kick and your gravity throw, etc., etc. But basically those powers have become way more difficult to level up and I found that kind of annoying and a little off-putting. But not so off-putting that I was like, oh, fuck this shit, I'm not gonna waste my time with this. Now when it comes to the controls, they are very, very similar to the first Gravity Rush, specifically the remastered version, since that was on the PS4 as well. But they work a lot better, honestly. I think they're way cleaner. There is one horribly obnoxious thing. So in the previous one, you could tilt your controller to move the frames around for the storytelling portions. But now you can use it to control your camera, which I don't really like because I could just be sitting there and like, you know, have to turn to the side to check my phone. And now my camera's way the fuck over there and it stays way the fuck over there instead of where I actually want it. But it's pretty easy to reset your camera. All you do is click down on the right stick, which that, that in and of itself is a massive, massive change, which is just freaking amazing because that was a huge issue I had with the previous Gravity Rush was centering your camera was not really a thing in that game and you really needed to because it can get really disorienting traveling the way you travel through this game. The combat controls, the aiming controls, everything is done better in this game, which obviously is something you would expect from a sequel or hope from a sequel until the point where it's perfected. And I would say this is damn near perfected for this game. Now when it comes to the graphics and the visuals, very similar style to the previous game, actually like pretty much dead on style. It just looks way better. There's more detail. The world is much bigger and you can see more of it from a greater distance. It's brighter. It's beautiful. I love it. I love the way this game looks. And there's some other really neat things. Specifically, I would say one of the neatest things is the water effects when you're using gravity when you're sitting in the water. I really enjoyed that. I thought it was just a cool detail that they added that like it was an orb of gravity distortion around you and it would move the water. I thought that was cool. Also another thing, like I said, the storytelling is uh, once again done through the frames, occasional cutscenes, so nothing too unusual. It definitely fits with the style they have set up for these games. And one thing that I love, and I wish all games did this, but not all games do this, but Gravity Rush definitely does, you can pause at any time. You can pause any time you want. During a cutscene, during one of the comic book cell cutscenes, during gameplay, during one of the actual cutscenes, whenever. I love that in games. I fucking hate it when games don't do that. And it may sound like a small complaint, but if you have to go away from the game and it's in the middle of a cutscene that you can't pause, that's pure bullshit. So at the end of the day, I actually recommend this game. I fully recommend this game. I think it's a lot of fun. I like the open world to it. Admittedly, I feel like with how large this game is, there could be a little bit more to do in it. But that having been said, I really enjoyed playing it. I definitely will go back and play it some more. Probably finish some of the stuff that I didn't get a chance to finish this playthrough. So, I gotta recommend it. If you got a PS4, it's worth sinking the money into. Okay, so in the comments below, why don't you tell me if you own a PS4? And as always, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share or subscribe. Have a good one.